Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, welcome to, I suppose, our speakers that are here with us uh, today and uh, to Matthew, uh, Matthew Ryan representing the Irish Secondary Schools Union. Matthew, thank you for your contribution there. And I suppose just in relation to parents is what you've mentioned. I was sort of curious about that, actually. To be honest, I would feel it's more schools. But um, just maybe the question to you is just how do we get parents more upskilled and involved? I have a couple of ideas myself, but I might just ask you that one. In relation to the teachers' unions, um, I suppose I'm a little bit surprised. Over the last number of weeks, if you've been listening to sort of what's been going on here with the bullying uh, sort of contribu contributors that we've had, it's about how important the school environment is. And not one of the groups here, I believe, has tackled that. Um, I'm also sort of surprised, I think, with Mr. David Duffy's statistics and the optimism that you've indicated when it comes to bullying, when everything that we've heard over the last year has sort of shown that over one in three from the UN have suffered from bullying. And perhaps you didn't include cyberbullying in that, but I'm very surprised at that. Um, in relation to, uh, I understand that, yes, teachers would also suffer from bullying, but, you know, the focus here is on children who take their own lives due to bullying. You know, there are terrible incidences of how severe bullying is um, in relation in relation to everything we've heard over the last few months. Um, if I might then turn to Mr. David O'Sullivan, in relation to primary schools and post primary and INTO, you've indicated no training. Um, you know, there have been a number of groups from DCU's Anti-Bullying Centre, the FUSE programme that's been rolled out, again, hasn't been mentioned here. Uh, SOAR is also another group, and it hasn't been mentioned here, where they do early intervention and transition year. I mean, why wasn't this part of your presentations? How important is this, that there is training out there that is available? There's the tacklebullying.ie website. There's the webwise.ie website. You know, teachers, information there for teachers and for parents, available. Um, I suppose I'm just annoyed a little bit, to be honest. Um, if I could ask each of the representatives here from the teaching unions, can you give me an example of a positive school environment, um, just representing your teaching organisations? You know, I understand we need more training for career guidance and we need more, uh, and there has been investment here in NEPS, but what would you say to me is a positive school environment versus in a school environment that does not embrace a culture, and not just an anti-bullying policy, but a culture of engaging with bullying? Thank you very much. Senator, so David uh, Duffy, I shall go to you first, please, to respond. Thanks, Chair. Yep, Senator, thank you very much for, for that. Um, what I would say in relation to the, the questions you raised here, firstly, one of the very first points I made was that bullying is a damaging experience for students and the wider school community. So we certainly believe it is a very serious problem, and that was at the very top of what we said. In relation to, you make reference to the statistics, and people do are actually quite surprised by this. The statistics I'm using are actually from UNICEF, the OECD, and a study by Rodin et al. And actually, if you'd like, I can give you more detail on that later. I'd be more than happy to do it. But it's actually international statistics from organisations like UNICEF and OECD. Um, in relation to the issue of the role of schools, absolutely schools have a significant problem, um, role here. Um, but that's not to say they're the only ones who have a role here. But of course, it's a serious issue. In relation to you ask about sort of school climate, um, if, I, if I'm picking up right on that, I believe the vast majority of schools have a very positive climate. But that's not to say that individual problems can't arise and sometimes can be quite serious. So I'm certainly not minimising the, the issue, but there are Thank supports you. that are essential to schools like NEPs and CAMS, which are beyond the control of schools. Yeah. Thanks, Thank David. Uh, David O'Sullivan? And if I can ask that an example is given, I sorry, that was just my question. Uh, can I just ask, can you give me an example of, say, if an incident of bullying happened, how would that be handled? In your idea, what would be the ideal way that that would be handled? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you for the question there. Just in relation to the training, the, the point I was making, I'm aware, yes, there are views in, from DCU and other initiatives such as WebWise. But this was a national programme of training, which I was really just making, uh, drawing the committee's attention to. There is no national kind of central policy in terms of what training we should be in place. I know other kind of agencies have gone and devised programmes, but we were seeking a national programme for training in relation to that. And just to say, look, there is, uh, you know, a shared responsibility for all in relation. We all had the same shared objective in trying to address 
uh, school bullying. And schools do take preventative measures to try to, you know, have their national awareness weeks. They have their posters. You know, they, they create a culture of, you know, openness so that parents can come into schools to address any issues and concerns. And it is important that parents would do that sooner rather than later so that schools can invoke their uh, anti-bullying policies and then for issues that do arise and look teachers are well versed in you know engaging in restorative practices at the end of the day is trying Mr. to Mr. you know if I might just ask, though, and I appreciate that, I very much do, that it's not solely schools. There are so many other stakeholders that are involved. But can I just ask you, in your opinion, can you give me an example of, say, an incident of bullying happens, what are the measures that would be taken in a school? Well, it would depend, I suppose, on the nature of the bullying incident. I suppose it's all about the proportionality. And again, it's about mending relationships as well. So schools would have their anti-bullying policies that they would invoke. They would engage with the parties. They would obviously look at strategies to how to go about because it is important at the end of the day that all relations are mended. And that's what teachers spend some of their time doing. It's the person who has been bullied from the incident. It is the perpetrator of it. And at the end of the day, these pupils have to share a classroom, sometimes in groups of 30 pupils, so that teachers do invest their time, quality time, in restorative practice in mending those relationships. But look, we understand, look, there are problems and sometimes they can be a little bit more challenging to, I suppose, mend those relationships. But teachers are wholly committed to having relationships restored. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over time, but I will let Anne in. Um, and Thank I'm you. sorry about this. I'll make sure you get in earlier the next time. But just in terms, you might give an example such as Senator Dolan is asking for. OK, well, I suppose sometimes the examples are very hard to see. If it's if it's a physical one where somebody has a black eye or you catch them in a fight, that's easy. That's easy to deal with. You can see it. But there are other um, very subtle cases going on. And sometimes if somebody doesn't speak up, you don't know. So I think what you have to do is you have to make sure that you have the best relationship you can possibly have with your students so they feel that they can come to you and talk to you. Or maybe through the student council, you could go through um, the, the policy on bullying and every student council member should go back to their classes and inform them and really what we need to create is a culture whereby students need to know it's real if it's happening and they can talk and the ESRI report earlier this week said that sometimes young people just need one good adult so if every student could have one good adult that would be a huge achievement for us. Thank you so much and I very much